Alright fam, before I continue on with today's video, which is going to be how to use the paddle shifters. I'm actually heading to the DMV right now because I'm going to go take my test on my M1 license. Here in California, you need an M1 license to ride or operate a motorcycle. I'm not sure about other states, but I do need one. So I'm going to go take the test real quick. Hopefully I pass first try. I've been studying. Uh, my goal was to get 100%. We're about to find out right now. Wish me luck. Speaking of getting an M1, damn, CBR. Well, your boy got his permit to ride his motorcycle. All I have to do left is go and get the uh, driving course done and then I'm pretty much set and I could get my license to ride my bike. Stinger, GT, right? Yeah, GT2. GT2? Yeah, all wheel drive. But let's get on to today's video which is how to paddle shift your Kia or Hyundai, whatever you guys have. It's pretty much universal. It applies to almost every single car. But I'm gonna run by real quick what we have done to the car for any new audience members or anybody who hasn't been keeping up to date with the Kia Stinger. Real quick, we have a MNS front lip. We got four star wheels front and rear with some Toyo proxies in the front. And then we got Mickey Thompson's in the back. And as for the hood, I honestly don't know the name of this hood. I do know MNS sells this hood now, but I bought this used for a really good deal. It just doesn't really sit properly because I guess it wasn't an accident beforehand which i didn't know of when purchasing they also have the gills in the front and then as for the mirror caps these are jalisco customs and then we got our little side skirt from ebay about 150 bucks and then moving on to the back i did a video on this if you guys want to go check it out i did the roof spoiler including an led backlight so whenever you break that led lights up the whole back kind of like how teslas do it and then what sets me apart from most is this freaking wing i love it look at this dude that looks so aggressive it looks like a freaking porsche from the rear but i'm actually getting some custom brackets made working with ksr performance so it gives it more of a height that way it's almost at level with this um spoiler as well we got the diffuser from mns as well we got over here the carbon fiber trunk uh garnish and that's pretty much it exhaust is a june bl exhaust I did a video on that if you guys want to go check it out. And then, oh, I forgot about that. Those tail lights, this is actually from the updated models. This is a 2020, but I put the facelifted tail lights so that it looks more like the newer cars. But these are the KDM versions. So these are actually sequentials. Let me show you real quick. Move. Look at that. That's sick. Ra rather than it just being a bulb and flashing, it's actually sequential, which I love. Get yourself a license plate frame represent KDM and help support the channel or get yourself some decals, banners, shirts, hoodies, all that stuff you can find at kdmbuilt.company.site and support your boy. That way we could keep making videos because honestly, YouTube ain't paying that good. Now let me show you what we got going on inside. This is a GT2 with the red guts. Freaking love this car so much. The interior, the red makes it stand out so much more. And then we got this from Soul Carbon. Remember, go check out the video where we installed this. It completely transformed the interior and for a very reasonable price. They're very affordable. I love it, man. Look at how good this interior looks now with all that carbon. And then over here, Mint's Garage LED steering wheel freaking sick lights up you guys are about to see it when i throw the gopro on how sick that thing is all right but enough talking let's do a quick warm start Let's get this baddie running. That way I can show you guys how to paddle shift real quick. It's pretty easy, honestly. I'm surprised many people have been asking for this. This thing is so sick. Look at this. It's a vibe in here. But these are your paddle shifters here. I have carbon overlays over them. Uh, usually they're sticking out right about here, this little metal piece. But in order to work these things, obviously your car has to be in drive. And for most vehicles, 
there is even a shifter here that you could like push to the left usually and you could go like up a gear down a gear kind of like as if it's a stick shift car but without the clutch if you guys want to see a video on how to use your gear shifter i can't do this on this video because the stinger doesn't have that option only has paddle shifters but my optima has that um, gear shifter so if you guys want to see a video drop a comment and if we get enough comments i'll make a video and gopros on all right let's get to it so you want to be in drive obviously and to make it fun you want to put it in sport mode so now that we're in sport mode what you want to do is press your left shifter down or towards you and once you do that you're going to be into first gear right so negative or the minus button will signify that you're going down in gear and then the plus will signify that you're going up a gear so for example i am in first gear right now the car is not moving but i am able to get to second but that's pretty much it usually these newer cars are smart enough they're not going to let you go to fourth gear while you're freaking at zero miles per hour so right now i'm in second want to go back down we're going to go first first second right so back down left hand it's down obviously towards you don't push the paddles forward you're going to break them so we're in first gear now I'm gonna start driving in first. I want you to listen to the RPM and I want you to see the RPM gauge as well. If you don't shift, all that's gonna be happening is your car is gonna get louder, your RPM range is gonna get super high and you're gonna be like, oh bro, what the heck? Why does my car sound like that? You might think that you're gonna break the car. You're not. These cars are smart enough. They have a built-in system to already help in shift once it hits that, um rpm band usually it's about 6,000. it would automatically shift for you i'll show you guys right now on the street remember this is a closed road in mexico but for some reason there's a bunch of traffic all right we're in first take a look i am not shifting it's going to automatically shift for me look at that it shifted on its own these cars are pretty smart. They're not going to let you damage themselves. You know, that's what I like about having newer cars. Pretty much anybody could hop into these things and pretty much drive it without damaging it. There's another angle. I have to use my left hand since obviously my right hand's holding my camera, but downshift. We're at 3000 RPMs. Downshift at four, accelerate, shift and just that easy uh, one thing also with this kia stinger is if you go to a complete stop it's going to completely boot you off and put you back into regular drive in order to get back into your gears all you do is press the shifter the minus one down and now i'm in first gear just like that we're in first gear if i go to a complete stop drive so the shifter's gone it's going to automatically shift for me now i'm going to show you when you should shift those were some good shifts usually i like to shift on these cars at about 4,000 rpms it sounds good it makes the car at the back give it a little pop which i like as well and honestly i've never had issues with this a lot of people get scared driving around doing this but it's like bro these cars are built for that they're not going to give you that little option to be shifting and stuff if they know that the consumer is going to be breaking him so often we're in second gear right now if for example i go to third right now it's going to drop down to about 1000 rpms which makes the car sluggish it doesn't sound as loud so in order to fix that we're going to go down a gear you see the rpm band went up we're at about two we could go down another one that's called a downshift we're at 3000 rpms right there and it makes the car sound aggressive. You accelerate and then shift up and boom. Now we're in second gear. You can use your paddle shifters at any point. You don't have to worry about having to be in a complete stop and then going to your shifters. Like when I barely started, I thought that's the only way you should use it. But then I learned like literally it's in drive right now. We're at about 30 miles per hour downshift and boom, we're in third gear.
Gotta let the car cool down for a bit. I'm gonna open up the hood. It's pretty hot today out here in Cal I mean Mexico. Kind of surprised because it's been raining like every single day over here. But let the car cool down. If you guys are wondering what we got in the engine bay, we got engine intakes, which hopefully soon, crossing my fingers, we could switch over to some true front mount intakes, which would be pretty sick. And then after that, add W1 catch can. Shout out add W1 for sending that over. If you guys need to see a video on how to install that, go check it out. It's a very easy install. And then underneath, we got JB4 right here. You can see the wire looms. I made it look OEM as possible, and it pretty much looks good. I took the cover off, that way it gets some true cold air into the engine. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the JB4 came with its uh, fuel lit kit, and that's, that's all. We have the stock intercooler. Can't forget about these HKS blow-off valves. These are the things that make the car whistle like crazy. They sound good, but sometimes I'm gonna admit to it, it does get annoying because it's just constant whistles. Sometimes I'm trying to be discreet and this thing just is blowing out mad air. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the engine itself. It looks it looks stock. I mean, that was the goal. The covers are from Add W1. The car is performing excellent. I love the car the way it is. I mean, I've been daily driving it at this point every single day. The Optima has been sitting down. I'm letting it retire for now until we put the big turbo kit. But other than that, this car has been a beauty. It just wastes way too much gas. Gotta close up the hood real quick. God damn. I love these pins. Makes it feel like a race car. Look at that. But I'm proud of myself. I passed first try at 100% with now my permit to my motorcycle which I'm gonna be using quite often now because the Stinger wastes way too much gas. Like 13 MPG, like bro, it's not even a truck. Like this thing is drinking so much gas. Sometimes I'm like, bro, is this thing just literally dumping fuel out the bottom or something? But I put gas every four days at this point. I'm putting about $70 and multiply that by four, no, actually five, because it's like every four days. 350 bucks bro in gas a month that's ridiculous and honestly i've been keeping myself from driving this thing so much because it's just a gas guzzler like i said i'm trying to switch over to full 85 that's the goal i'm hitting up somebody now if they could get that done because i need this thing on full 85 asap 85 over here is only like 290 i think 299 which compared to 91 here in cali it's about 560 for some 91 and it's some cheap shit dude it looks like cat piss when you start pumping that thing i'm like dude how do they even allow that to get so expensive when it's literally all detergent if you guys are enjoying the content make sure you're hitting the like button that's what keeps this channel alive like i said if i don't see any engagement i don't know if i have an audience or not views to me are pretty much nothing at this point what i love to see is the like count and also comments when i see comments that's when i know that people are truly watching and enjoying this content or having questions and i do answer every single question but enough said let's hop back in and do some rips Hopefully there is no police here, which I'm kind of scared of. But first gear, shift, shift, Woo. dude, this thing is so fast, bro. Forgot how fast this thing is. This thing hugs so good too with the Mickey Thompson's in the back. Oh, dude, that scared the fuck out of me. All right, let's get it. So back in a first. So I want you to go out and try this and let me know how it went for you and if you guys feel comfortable now driving and shifting because honestly, it really changes the experience. It makes you feel one with the car. It feels like it's you controlling it rather than just your foot. You're also using your hands. I love it. Ever since I've learned how, um, you, you'll start to know 
when you should and when you shouldn't be using this obviously if you're trying to save on gas you want to stay away from using you know your paddle shifters or your gearbox because the higher the rpm range you are the more gas your vehicle is going to be consuming but yeah guys i hope you guys did enjoy and i really hope i did educate someone on how to use the paddle shifters it's pretty easy it's not difficult anybody with paddle shifters or a shifter could learn how to do this to upgrade to a new exhaust let me see the damage let's see if i could find it god bro shit is scraped time for a new muffler for sure let's see what else got damaged underside looks fine so it looks like it's just your exhaust luckily you put this because if not this shit would have got damaged too Oh, bro, you've only had this for what, like a day? And don't be scared about damaging your tranny. Usually all these modern day cars have a system to prevent you from damaging it. The only time I would say when you will technically might, I'm sorry. One way I think you can damage the tranny is if you're at a dig and you don't shift right. In that sense, I would try to stick away until you start to understand, you know, the concept of shifting because when you do it from a dig that's when your tranny is the most vulnerable because usually it's at a still point and then all of a sudden you're giving that power and that's how your tranny gives out right so try to stick away from doing digs try to first learn how to operate the shifting and then once you feel comfortable then i'd suggest maybe try doing a dig but if you don't really have to do a dig honestly don't the only times you want to do a dig is on a prep surface and if it's on a race because honestly if you're just doing dig after dig on your own you're wasting your you're wasting your time you're not going to learn anything you're not going to get anything out of it other than how to keep the steering wheel straight from a dig and maybe shifting but you're risking your tranny you're risking your axle you're risking like damaging something on your car and you know then your car's down for a couple weeks months or whatever so try to first learn how to paddle shift if you guys did know how to paddle shift and you guys learned something new today comment down below please i really want to see some engagement from you guys i want to see if i have an audience because sometimes i feel like i'm talking to myself i do read every single comment from you guys I respond to every single comment unless it's negative when they're, when they're negative I honestly just read it and hide you from this channel prevent you from watching any more videos because I don't have time for that I barely have enough time to make these videos and the last thing I want is to see some negative comments so yeah you guys I hope you guys enjoyed please hit the like button also subscribe and with that I'll see you guys in the next one peace